Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, December the 17th. Uh, as we usually do, we will sing a few songs of praise. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a short message for you that I hope will be beneficial. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I don't know if you have that book, so I will give you the number in our book and also give you the name of the song so that you can find it if you desire to sing along with us. The first song is a familiar one. In our book, it is number 548. The title is The Lily of the Valley. 548, The Lily of the Valley. <clears throat> I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. And all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Oh, he all my griefs has taken, and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strength and mighty power. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Oh, all about me, and nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Our next song is number 704. 704, the title is Bind Us Together. 704, Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body. That is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Before we observe the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 300. And 76, 376, it is titled, He Paid a Debt. He Paid a Debt, 376. <clears throat> 
He paid a debt we did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. He paid that debt at Calvary. He cleansed my soul and set me free. I'm glad that Jesus did all my sins erase. I now can sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. One day he's coming back for me to live with him eternally. Won't it be glory to see him on that day? I then will sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. On the first day of the week, uh, we are instructed uh, to observe uh, the death of our Lord and what we call communion. Uh, it is called uh, the Lord's Supper. <coughs> It is called the Eucharist. It is this time that we set aside uh, to just remember the debt that Jesus paid. The song uh, so aptly puts it, uh, Jesus paid a debt for us that we just can't pay. He didn't owe it to us. He took the cross of Calvary as a burden, knowing that that burden uh, that he took that the pain that he would suffer, that the blood that he would shed was for each of us, paying a debt for us, a debt that he didn't owe, and a debt that we cannot pay. And so as we gather about the Lord's Supper, let's hearken back to Calvary. Let's remember Jesus uh, sacrificing himself one time for all, a sacrifice a sacrifice that allows our sins to be forgiven. A sacrifice that opens the door for grace, that opens the door for our salvation. And so as we partake of these emblems, the emblems of his body and the emblem of his blood, help us to remember uh, Jesus and the sacrifice that he made so willingly for each one of us. Let's pray for the bread the body of our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your divine plan, you showed the way that you sent Jesus from your right side down to earth to live as a human being, to feel all the things that human beings felt, even though he was part of the Godhead, that he could do things that no man had ever done. The physical part of him felt pain, the physical part of him felt agony and the emotional part of him felt that strain of emotion as he hung on the cross and he gave up his body. Help us as we uh, partake of this bread to remember the body on that cruel cross, nails in hands and in feet. Bless us as we partake. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that the blood that Jesus shed, that it is the blood of our salvation, that it is the blood of our hope, that it is the blood of our life eternal, that we can live with you, dear God. And we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to go through that for each one of us. So as we hearken back to Calvary, Help, it to, help us to make it a moment that happened just, just moments ago that Jesus gave himself up that we might live, that he shed his blood, 
that we might have forgiveness. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We've come to the end of the Lord's Supper, but for convenience sake at this point in time, uh, we are going to uh, think of giving back to the Lord. The song says that Jesus paid a debt. Uh, we cannot pay a debt, but we can give back to the Lord and give back to the church as part of our debt, as part of the realization that our job here on earth is to be servants as Jesus was a servant. And at giving back, uh, being part of our service, giving back that the church might achieve its purpose to go into the world uh, and make disciples of all nations, help those that uh, utilize these funds to do so, that they will be used in such a way that more people will come to the Lord and more people that are in need will be taken care of. Let's pray for the offering. Our God and Heavenly Father, as we just thought about Jesus paying a debt, help us to pay a little part of our debt. Help us to give as you, has told, you have told us to lay by its store, that on the first day of the week that we will give back. Help us to adhere to that scripture that says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver and that we are to give as we have prospered. Help us to give with a, an open heart and help us to give in such a way that uh, you will be glorified in that giving and your kingdom here on earth will grow stronger and stronger. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we're going to sing is number 792, My Eyes Are Dry. My Eyes Are Dry, number 792. <clears throat> my eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold and I know how I ought to be alive to you and then to me. What can be done to an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me on you in the wine of your blood. I hope you enjoyed participating in our song service. I know that the Lord was glorified, and I know that we can be uplifted by uh, praying to our God, uh, the maker of all, the creator, and we can do all in the name of his son, who was there at creation, participating in it as we learn from John chapter 1, verse 1. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that uh, the title of tonight's lesson is Your Life is Like the Morning Fog. I don't mean this to be a model and lesson about death, but in James chapter 4, verse 14, James writes, your life is like a morning fog. Some version says it's like a vapor. And some versions say it's here for a while and then gone. Uh, some versions say it's here for a while and then vanishes. Uh, in the epistle of James, I believe that James is speaking about our lives. He's speaking 
in terms of the knowledge that we will live a certain amount of years here on earth. And we are not told how many years. We do have an interesting psalm that says that uh, three score and ten uh, is about the norm, at least it was back then. And, and the years after that are bonus years. With modern medicine and modern technology, the lifespan of human beings has expanded and many people can expect to live uh, longer lives than that. But it is inevitable. One day, we will be like that morning fog. We will be like that vapor. Uh, we will be here for a while and then we will vanish. We treasure the moments that we have here on earth. And our Bibles tell us how we are to live our lives. And so at this uh, point from the moment we're born and then to the moment we're born spiritually uh, in salvation, we are to live lives in service to our God. Everything that we do in these bodies, we are to do for the glory of our Lord. But the kingdom here on earth is a dress rehearsal. It's a dress rehearsal for eternal life. See, we can't measure eternity. Eternity is forever. A second, a minute, an hour, a day, a year are all temporary. All of our days are behind us that we have lived. So in light of this fact, the Bible tells us about how we ought to conduct our lives. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says that whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Do, do we get that? Do we understand that what we are doing in our life is trying to glorify our God, the magnificence of his creation, the magnificence of his son living on this earth uh, for three and a half years, spreading the gospel, spreading the good news. And it, it is just, you know, a miracle to each one of us that we have this time on earth. And we're told that whatever we do, we are to do it for the glory of our God. Why? Because he is our creator. And we do it for the glory of our creator. Uh, I didn't do anything from a personal standpoint to bring myself into this life. Oh, I know the biological function, but um, we, we know that uh, through conception, each of us were born. And no matter how old we are right now, everything behind us is past. And so what we do in our bodies on this earth shouldn't be solely about you and shouldn't be solely about me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, the Holy Spirit inspired Paul writes these very poignant and important words. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price so that you must honor God with your body. Do you realize 
that that's all that we have to honor God here on earth with. You know, we sang some songs. We used our body, a part of our body, to sing praises to the Lord. We, we have to keep that in mind. We have to understand that it is within this body that everything that we do, everything that we say, is for our Creator. Why? Because God bought us with the price. He bought us with the price of His Son. And so with that, we honor God with our bodies. Now, the likely question here might be, how do we do this? How do we function this way? Well, I would pretend that we are to do this and act with love, act with compassion, act with mercy and kindness. How often? As often as we can. As often as we can. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, we get to be covered by his righteousness. Our good works are no longer the rubbish that the Apostle Paul talked about. Our good works are what is important in our lives. They, they shine like bright diamonds to point people toward the Heavenly Father. Why? Because we are to live these lives and give all glory to our God and Heavenly Father. This is what the scripture that we read told us. We were bought with a price, and so we must honor God with our body. We honor God by the works that we do. We honor God that uh, we serve as his son served us. And as he came and he told us that I did not come to be served, but to serve. And so with that, let's read a few more words from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 to 14. He says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. You know what? I believe that that tells us that we will never feel as fulfilled as when we are serving people in some way. That is to me, the fulfillment of life. What do we do? Well, here at our church at Northfield, every so often we go into Atlantic City and we feed the homeless. We give them items of clothing, especially now as winter is coming on. We give away something that we have. Why? because we do it in service. With that, I believe we give encouragement to people, that people understand that there are folks out there that are willing to serve. And you know what? We can do that with the people that we care about. We can show how much we care them uh, about them uh, when we give of ourselves even if it's a hug. We, we won't ever regret this type of living. We have to remember that life is short. That's where we started this in James, that life is like that mist or like that vapor. You know, there are folks out there that may live to be a 100 years old. And you know what? That's still a grain of sand on a beach compared to what eternity is all about. 
No one knows the day or the time, just as no one knows when Jesus will return to judge the world. No one knows when we will be called. All that we know is that we have, if we have given our love over to God in obedience through confessing Jesus Christ, that we will be called to heaven. And not to sound crass, young babies die, young people die, children die, teenagers die, young adults die. Sometimes people die just on the brink of learning to understand what their life purpose is. And with that in mind, we need to understand that people around us will go to sleep in the Lord. And no one knows the length of our lives. And so what we need to do with our lives is develop it to the breadth of it. Which means making the most out of each day. I utilize this all the time when I say to people, how are you right now? Okay, the moment's gone. Do, do we see how the passage of time actually works. We need to remember that brevity and uncertainty is really what a person's lifespan is. We must never procrastinate in doing the Lord's will. We're supposed to always press forward. Of all people, the Apostle Paul, who had given his life and had suffered physically so much, and we would have thought that he would be very, very confident. But in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, he says, I have not already obtained it, but I press on that I may lay hold of it. You know what? If the Apostle Paul realized he wasn't perfect, we must realize ourselves that we are not perfect. And none of us glorify God as perfectly as we should. I know that I don't. I know that I have work that I have to do in my life. But as long as we strive daily to do the best possible job that we can do, I believe that God is satisfied be satisfied with our efforts. I can press onward like Paul said he did. I can learn from the mistakes, be sorry for the mistakes, repent for the mistakes until next time. And you know what? When we are told that life is like a race, it is an endurance race, we hope, that lasts many years. But what we do is we understand that all of our races will one day end. And the prize that we receive is the heavenly prize. The Apostle Paul really summed it up in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. He, press, he says, press on to the goal of the upward call of Christ Jesus. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's get better. Let's do whatever we can to serve the Lord, realizing that our lives are like vapors that appear for a short period of time and then are gone. Let's experience what we are to be experienced and approach everything with love and compassion and kindness and service. We do this as children of God. And with that, we offer the invitation to you this evening. If you have not started your Christian walk, uh, we know that the Bible explains to us what we must do. Having heard the truth of God's word, we are to believe it. We are to uh, uh, confess Jesus as the Son of God. We are to put the moments behind us that uh, we're not proud of and repent of those and be baptized for the remission of our sins. 
And so we offer you that invitation this evening. If you have not come to the Lord and started your Christian walk, we invite you to come to him. If you feel that need and you feel urgently, get in touch with one of us and we will be there to serve you. Let's all pray together as we end this service. Our God and Heavenly Father, help us to understand the brevity of life and help us to understand that in, in it, uh, it's not something that, uh, you know, we ought to think of, you know, I'm going to die tomorrow, I'm going to die next week. But think in terms of what can I do in this body that will glorify my God? What can I do in service to my Lord that will make him proud of me as a Christian? Help us to be people of love and compassion and kindness and goodness in our lives so that the time that we spend here in God's kingdom on earth will lead us one day to his kingdom in heaven. I just pray that you would continue to bless us, that you would continue uh, to be in our lives. Help us to learn from our experiences and get better from them. And remember that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Help us to use them wisely the way we should. Be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we have together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.